previously on the castle. You're not fat, Charlotte. The horse just had a weak heart. I'm not sure that heaven does have a VIP area. <laughs> Who dug him up in the first place? And after I'd killed him, I realized he was the postman. <laughs> We present The Castle by Kim Fuller. This week on The Castle, a dragon, a sausage, and an execution. Morning, Merlin. Good morning, Sir John. Here's the morning scroll. Oh, I see the King has banned wives and girlfriends from accompanying our knights to the Crusades. Here you are, sire. A full English breakfast. Ah, thank you, Merlin. And to prove the ingredients are truly English, I've given them the power of speech. Beg your pardon? Ask the sausages where they're from, sire. <laughs> what? Go on, sire. Uh, well, hello there, sausages. Where are you from? We're from up north, my lord. <laughs> Just outside Bolton, is that like? I think it's good to meet, yeah? <laughs> Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> and the egg. Ask the egg. <laughs> hello, egg. Where do you hail from? From the green verdant pastures of Wilston, sire. <laughs> All right! This is amazing. <laughs> How about the beans? Do they speak as well? No, sire, but they do make a noise. <laughs> Merlin, I appreciate the patriotic gesture, but I, I find it unnerving to have a conversation with my breakfast before sticking a fork into it. Oh, don't worry, sire. I've put them under a spell. They won't feel a thing. Oh, okay. Uh, well, here it goes. <laughs> oh, sorry, my lord. Needs a bit of work. Merlin, you're an idiot. Hello, hello. Of course it's Ah, morning, Anne. Charlotte. Morning, Father. Morning, Sir John. What are you girls up to today? Oh, the usual excitement. Embroidery, rejecting potential suitors, and nine hours sitting for a stained glass window. How about you, Charlotte? Are you being immortalised in coloured glass? No, sire, but I believe I am already immortalised on the wall of the gent's water closet at the Merck Inn. <laughs> Morning, everyone. What a lovely day it is. The sun ascending in the firmament, bathing the castle walls in, like, a golden glow. Are you all right, Henry? Yes, father. Why? Because you've somehow managed to string a series of words together into a more or less coherent sentence. That's because I've decided it's not cool anymore to be in our cuticular in our, uh, you know, can't put words together if you know what I mean. <laughs> Bizarrely, for once, I do. Uh, perhaps there's a chance that uh, Charterhouse might be worth all the fees I've been pouring into it over the years. <laughs> cool. Morning, Sister Anne. How are you doing? How am I doing? Since when have you ever cared how I'm doing? Good point. I take that back. What's wrong with your shirt? What do you mean, what's wrong? It's the Hackett brush cotton button down there all the fush. But it's tucked in. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Well, things change. You've been a slob for 14 years. Why change now? He's met a girl. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're right. And she must be quite pretty because... You've even had a bath. Uh, I've had baths before. Yes, but this time you've put water in. <laughs> you don't know nothing. Anything, Henry. She doesn't know anything. See, Dad agrees too. You've met a girl. You've met a girl. Uh, you must be kidding. Girls, girl. What, like, you... Uh, shut up! I mean, I wouldn't be seen dead with a girl. They're ringing. I'll catch you later in the nut house, right? Oh, you thick girl. <laughs> what on earth was all that about? He's, He's met, met a girl. girl. Ooh, breakfast. Mm, I'm starving. Oh, get off! Did that sausage just scream when you bit it? Yes. How weird. I know. Sausages don't normally have a Bolton accent. <laughs> My lord, I see the king hath banned wives and girlfriends from accompanying knights on the crusade. Ah, good idea. The last thing a soldier needs is to be interrogated by a loved one when he returns, stinking of cheap perfume after indulging in the bordellos of the Orient. Yes, very true. Well, I've <laughs> just had word from France. The townspeople of Avignon are naming a building after me. Really? Why would they do that, sire? No offence intended. It's in honour of my deeds de daring do that I've done in the crusades. I see. What kind of building? A library? A university? Ah, they call it a uh, cabinet public scatologique. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What do you think that is, Duncan? Um, it's a kind of uh, meeting place, I believe. Uh, a seat of learning? You could say that, or s several seats of learning in a row. I can't fathom the French, but, but I'm sure it's a great honour. I, too, have a letter here, my lord. Oh, tis not, perchance, a perfumed B.A. do from some exotic maiden offering to massage me with oil and rose water. Not unless her name is Sir John Chilcott, the King's Lord High Justice. Oh. What does he want? He's chairing an inquiry into the conduct of the Crusades, and he wants to interview you. Oh, that's brilliant. It means the King is thinking of bestowing some honour on me for my heroic exploits against the Saracens. You mean, for example, the heroic exploit when you came face to face with the Turkish commander at Antioch and soiled your own hose? <laughs> Duncan, why do you always pick on the negative side of things? I remember explaining to you that I'd had a particularly fierce lamb tagine the night before. <laughs> oh, yeah. Harissa sauce is lethal at the best of times. It takes a real hero to eat it at all. So perhaps Lord Chilcott is conducting an inquiry into bravery in the face of highly spiced casseroles. <laughs> if I, I can't see what there is to inquire about. We invaded the land of the infidel, slaughtered them by the thousand, then came home. Job done. Which I believe is what you said in Antioch, sire. <laughs> Yes? Uh, it's Thomas here, Sir John. There's a letter for you. Special delivery. What's so special about it? Unlike most mail, it has actually been delivered to the right place, sire. <laughs> it has a scent of perfume on it. Oh, so it does. Ah, oh, perfume. Oh, how that brings back the memories. Could this letter be from... My dear Sir John. Oh, yes. It is from Lady Lumley of Purdy. <laughs> What a thrill it was to receive your letter from Knights Reunited. <laughs> it took me back to those carefree days years ago, you chasing me through the meadows until I succumbed to your advances on the haystack and I blush to remember it, save to say I was pulling straw from the most unlikely places for weeks <laughs> afterwards. How I long to... Merlin, what are you doing here? I wondered if you were all right, my lord. Yes, yes, I am. Why? I heard you speaking in a woman's voice. <laughs> <laughs> Just a theatrical convention, Merlin. It's like, uh, like a soliloquy or, or an aside. I see, my lord. Methinks he is hiding something. So it's, uh, it's nothing to worry about. Hopefully, he did not hear of my passion for Lady Lumley of Purdy. I see, my lord. Aha! So he is enamoured of his childhood sweetheart, Lady Lumley. Um, do you not have any shelves to put up, Merlin? How doth he know about Lady Lumley? Just as if he is hearing my science. Yes, my lord. I have a shelf to put up in the drawing room. Little doth he know, I am hearing his asides. <laughs> Go on, then. What's the point of an aside if people can hear it? I mean, it might as well be a speech. He makes a good point. <laughs> Is this an aside, or, or are we actually speaking? I don't know, sire. Let's start again. Uh, get out! Oh, well, if you can hear this, Merlin, don't tell anyone about Lady Lumley. I will get out, my lord. Is there anything else you require? He knows I won't tell a soul, but I wonder if he knows she's married. No, thank you. Married? I never knew she was married. Johnny, I look forward to seeing you very soon. I cannot tell him I am married and am leaving my husband. Ah, it's no wonder I missed it. She wrote it as an aside. <laughs> but I love her and will risk anything to be with her, and yet I'm afraid. Lady Lumley. She cannot hear me. She has already left. Ah, well, I look forward with joy to her arrival. Actually, I'm terrified. Her husband has the reputation of an evil murderer. Why am I doing asides to myself? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> Got any more gold thread, Charlotte? I need some for the Virgin Mary's stupid halo. <laughs> you really don't like embroidery, do you? What makes you say that? Because you've embroidered embroidery socks across that angel's chest. <laughs> ah, me, Charlotte. Sometimes I wonder if this is all there is for a woman in this life, sitting by the window embroidering scenes from the Bible. I'd say, yeah, pretty much. Isn't it awesome? I'm nearly 17. I'll soon be going through the menopause. <laughs> Most of my school friends have been married, had children and been beheaded by now. I mean, what do we have to look forward to? It's brilliant being a girl. You, there are loads of things women can do. Like what? Embroidery. Great. What else? Uh, 
speed embroidery, uh, synchronized embroidery, cage embroidery, and all-star Aussie rules well to wait tag embroidery. <laughs> Apart from embroidery. How about flashing your underdrawers at the ploughman so he loses concentration and gets a kink in his furrow? That's just you, Charlotte. <laughs> oh, no, you should try it. It really passes the time of day. <laughs> You've proved my point. Being a woman in this day and age is just dull and meaningless. Well, how about this? Hmm? Look here, in the yellowing pages. Oh? <laughs> Women, are you feeling undervalued? Think life holds no future for you? Let me, the witch woman, help you find a new purpose. Call on me at www, that's witchwomanswisdom.co.uk slash hovel slash scary forest slash knock three times and bring some silver. <gasps> Perfect. Let's go. Okay, Henry, uh, you're an orc, and I'll be a dwarf, because dwarves are evil, and they can, like, totally zap anything. Oh, Toby, you tick. I'm fed up with all this World of Warcraft stuff with plagues and blood and dungeons and killing. I mean, it's just like real life. Why can't they come up with a fantasy game or something? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, what do you think of, like, girls? I don't see the point of them, dude. I know, but lately I've been, like, thinking about them. Why have you been thinking about, like, girls, dude? Well, I haven't been thinking about every girl, just, like, one, like, specialised girl. <laughs> Which one, man? Lady Lindsay de Lohan. <laughs> Lilo! Wow! I saw Lilo walking down the street yesterday and she was so fly. And when I looked at her, I felt this, like, feeling like there was a flock of birds flapping about in my guts. You ought to chew your food for much longer, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I think, dude? I think I'm in love or something. <laughs> ah, Sir John, what are you doing at the town hall? I've been drafted under the Chilcot inquiry panel. All rise for the chairman, Lord Chilcot. All right, sit down. Uh, they haven't had time to rise yet. <laughs> Too late now. The court for the inquiry into the crusade numbers one to nine is in session. First witness, state your name. Sir William de Warren, Knight Errant, Scourge of the Levant. Meat eater, dragon slayer, scout's proficiency badge in wooing, grade eight certificate in torturing. Came 14th in the Country Matters magazine survey of the top 20 knights. Maidens wouldn't mind laddering their underhose on a rainy afternoon in Kidderminster. <laughs> Can you get on with it? I have a series of inquiries to undertake, including an inquiry into why I have so many inquiries. And it please you, my lord, I will be as brief as a Dutchman's manhood. Now, what do you say to the charge that you led the unlawful invasion of the Middle East, wreaking havoc and destruction and slaughtering tens of thousands of innocents? Thank you, my lord, but I cannot claim all the credit. There were other knights with me, albeit the majority of them were cowards and lightweights. Looking at the records, you maintain that your actions were in response to so-called threats to the kingdom in the form of DMD. That is correct, my lord. Would you like to explain the nature of a DMD? A DMD, my lord, is a dragon of mass destruction. <laughs> What prey is a dragon of mass destruction? That is a huge, fearsome, flying creature, my lord, which breathes fire, brimstone, and indeed molten lava if he's really upset, and which can prepare himself for an attack in 45 minutes. I see. And how many of these dragons did you discover in the countries you laid waste? Ah, ah, wait a minute. Um, oh, uh, there was, um, um, oh, and then, and then the, um, none, my lord. None? Uh, correct. Um, oh, no, 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 wait a minute. Um, no, that was a chicken. So your very reason for going to war did not exist? It depends what you mean by exist. I mean having some tangible form. Well, some say God doesn't have any tangible form, but does that mean he doesn't exist? If faith, that would put an army of cardinals on the street looking for work. <laughs> on the other hand, it would save on Christmas presents. Silence! <laughs> I dismiss the defence and find you guilty of bringing the kingdom into disrepute and thus sentence you to death by hanging. Oh, oh. That, that, that seems rather harsh, Chilcot, old chap. <laughs> would you like to reconsider it? Very well. Death by beheading. Take him away. Right, I'm off to another inquiry. Bring on the carriage! Church coming through! Hey, wait a minute! Out of the way! Sorry about that, old boy. Oh. Here's the witch woman's house. Oh, how do you know? You can tell by the dried frogs on the washing line. Ooh! And the fact that it says witch woman's house on the sign. Clever. Be knocking on the door. That 
must be the witch woman's door. B. Uh, it be Lady Anne Woodstock and her friend Charlotte. A. And what be the purpose of this knocking that you be doing? B. I, I want B. to. Uh, I, I want to ask your advice about the role of women in society and whether there's any hope of breaking through the wattle and daub ceiling. <laughs> Can you come in? Oh, sorry. Oh, you can't be too careful. <laughs> um, would you like a drink? Um, Dry white wine, please. Charlotte! No, don't have that. How about a cup of tea? Hmm? Chamomile, mint, tree bark, dried bat's wing, or your regular builder's bum tea served in a cup with a crack in it? Uh, <laughs> do you know what? We'll pass. Now, to answer your question, a modern woman can be anything from a nun to a whore and everything in between. Problem is, there isn't anything in between. Nun or whore? That's so depressing. Mm, tell me about it. Oh, <laughs> how about Joan of Arc? She's a good role model. Won't last. She'll burn herself out in the end. <laughs> <laughs> tell you what, though. There is one area for women who have no role in life. What's that? Charity work. Yeah. Visiting orphans, visiting plague victims, visiting prisoners, that kind of thing. So that's, like, all the advice you've got, is it? Well, better get ready for my next client. Could you help me on with this hump? <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, thanks be to you, dears. You be come back any time, Lee. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh, that was unbelievable. I know. Surely everyone keeps a bottle of dry white wine for guests. <laughs> Oh, uh, what is it, Merlin? My lord, I must leave Woodstock. I feel that my presence here might put you all in danger. Uh, if it's about those shelves that fell down in the bathroom, I really don't mind. <laughs> no, my lord, something more serious. As you know, sire, I apprenticed at the Lady J.K. Rowling Academy for Wizardry in Hogwash. <laughs> and whilst there, incurred the terrible wrath of a student in the Upper Sixth, a demonic spirit with the face to curdle the blood and a voice to turn the hardest heart to porridge. How awful. And, uh, what did this creature call himself? Adrian. <laughs> also known as the Green Manalishi. The Green Manalishi? Yes, my lord. With the two-pronged crown. The balladeer master Mick McFleetwood wrote a song about him. He takes on the form of a huge monster Look, no, and... I, I really don't believe in all that occult nonsense. But, my lord, what about the danger Look, of... there's no question of you leaving. You're very useful around the castle, putting shelves up. Even though they do all immediately fall down again. Anyway, Anne and Charlotte would be devastated if I let you resign. So that's it. Come on, go on. Thank you, my lord. Okay, Henry, I, I can see her. It's definitely Lilo. She's got a low-cut dress on, man. Ooh, if that dress was cut any lower, it'd be a sock. <laughs> okay. As she walks by, right, I'm going to be cool and not, like, look at her. Because she's used to guys looking at her, so I'll make like I don't notice her, and then, like, she'll, like, notice me. Sounds good, Chiz. Confusing, but good. Okay, here we go. What happened? Worked like a dream. She totally ignored you, man. <laughs> you know what, dude? What? I think I'm in. <laughs> Who goes there? I am Cardinal Duncan. I have come to visit the prisoner de Warren. I have orders from the king not to allow visitors under any circumstances on pain of death. Unless you bribe me. Here's a florin. All right, then. <laughs> you know, I never really wanted to be a jailer, your worship. I do have ambitions to move out of dungeons and into something more creative. Oh, really? Like what? Musical theatre. <laughs> you learn a lot about dance down here watching the hangings. It's amazing the moves people make at the end of a rope. Body popping, bump and grind, pogo, swing, line dancing, it's all there. The hitchhiker, the road runner. The road runner? Yeah, that's if the rope breaks and they just leg it. <laughs> yes, that's most interesting, Jill. Number six, you've got a visitor. I am not a number, I am a free no. man. <laughs> Ish. 
My lord, I have brought you sustenance, bread, cheese, milk, and the latest copy of Stuff magazine. Ah, Duncan, how the time passes slowly. The minutes and days crawl along like a wounded Saracen dragging himself out of a burning tent. But, my lord, you've only been here for 20 minutes. <laughs> it seems like an eternity. Worse than watching that new fairground game, Million Crown Drop. <laughs> Sire, the business with the dragons of mass destruction. We all knew they were just a pretense, but no one realized we'd have to actually justify it. I think I can help. Oh, Duncan, if you could get me out of this hellhole, I'd give you money to buy any woman you desire. I am a man of the cloth. I abjure all carnal pleasures. Oh, yes. But perhaps a holiday on Mykonos with that nice plasterer who repaired the kitchen ceiling. <laughs> Done. Ah, Sir John, Cardinal Duncan, good day to you. Ah, what are you doing there, Thomas? I'm beating a piece of metal into a different shape with a view to inventing something which as yet I do not have any use for, my lord. Oh, what a wonderful thing is the creative process. Impenetrable. <laughs> well, Thomas, the Cardinal would like you to try your hand at something more specific. And uh, what would that be, sire? Tell him, Duncan. A dragon of mass destruction. Or DMD. What does that look like? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's very difficult to say, as no one's ever seen one. Oh, in that case, I'm sure I can do it. I told you he could do it, Duncan. But, Thomas, what devilish equipment will you need in order to make a device which spits smoke and fire and puts the fear of God into anyone who sees it? I reckon I can do it with a dozen lengths of 4B2 and some chicken wire. <laughs> now, if the warrant's to be saved from the executioner's axe, we'll need it by cockcrow tomorrow morning. No worries, my lord. Excellent. Shall we say, oh, 600 hours? Ah, we don't use the 24-hour cock anymore, don't we? <laughs> the last one only got to 15.30 when it lost its voice. Very well. Six o'clock. Till tomorrow. Careful on your way out. The, uh, the... <laughs> yes, never mind. <laughs> Six in the morning. By my trust. Goes there. Lady Anne Woodstock and her friend Charlotte. What do you refined ladies want in a filthy jail? We are visiting prisoners as part of a new charity and also to give meaning to our lives as modern independent women. Also, do you have any hunky fit single prisoners with a GSOH in their own hair? <laughs> no. Here's a sovereign. Yes. Follow me. And bend and stretch. Heel turn and kick ball change. Et voilà. Le prisoner. <gasps> My Lord de Warren. My Lady Anne, how your eyes gleam and sparkle like a chest of looted gold. Hello, Charlotte. Hi. Cool cod piece. Oh, thank you. It hath a really nice sheen to it. Uh, that, my lady, is due to my having washed it with smooth finish Nutrigloss to minimise split ends. <laughs> because I'm worth it. <laughs> Why are you incarcerated in this pestilential place, my lord? I am a scapegoat, condemned to die for defending my country while my erstwhile colleagues are free to travel the globe, lecturing on world peace for a thousand sovereigns a pop. What an injustice. And yet, sire, you seem so brave and fearless. Ah, milady, the Grim Reaper hath been my constant companion. I fear him not. Little do they know that Duncan's efforts will free me in the end. Little does he know that although he made an aside, I did not hear it. <laughs> My lord, is there anything we can do to ease the anguish of your impending death? As it happens, I have a list here. Who wishes to wear the handcuffs first? Oh, have a go. Wait, shall I? <laughs> Sir William, I know you have always had a thing for me. How gracious of you to notice. And on the eve of your death, it would be heartless to deny you at least the pleasure of one last kiss. There is a god, my lady. Fuck her up. Kiss me, Sir William. Oh, I, 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 I'm trying, but these chains are taut. I, I cannot lean forward any further. If, if you could just work your face through those bars. Oh, I fear I cannot. They're too close together. Oh, the cruelty of fate. Just six inches would bridge the gap between us. Oh, tis unbearable. Wait. How far did you say? <laughs> Just six inches. I may have a solution. <laughs> right, everyone out. Let's get the prisoner up to the block. Oh, jailer, if you're serious about a career in show business, you really need to have better timing. Uh, my lord? Yes, Charlotte. After your execution, can I keep your copies? <laughs> Oh, 
and ladies, I'm Billy Bagshot from Bagshot, and you're not. Welcome to a festival of music, movement and mutilation with a very special bill featuring Dame Catherine Jenkins, the Crusader's sweetheart, and direct from the Antioch Palladium, Sir William de Warren, who has kindly agreed to be beheaded for your viewing pleasure. Guaranteed a one-off performance. <laughs> morning, Chilcot. And what an excellent day for an execution. Blue sky, bird singing, makes you glad to be alive. Duncan, how's Thomas getting on with the dragon? I'm afraid he's having a bit of trouble. Oh, really? Well, you'd better hurry up. He's trying to attach wings to a pig, but I'm afraid he just looks like a pig with fake wings attached to him. <laughs> Not something that would sow panic and fear and bring death and destruction to the greatest army on earth? Not really, sir, no. Although if it fell on your head, it would give you quite a nasty bruise. Uh, could I prevail on you to put your head on the block, sire? You might have given it a wipe down first. I could catch something. <laughs> and now, the first ever execution ballet to be performed by Jim the Jailer, who next week will be auditioning for the new talent show, The Axe Factor. <laughs> what a feeling. Da, 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 da. Means believing. Da, oh, get da, on with it. I've got da, five other executions da, to attend today. Da, no, no, I don't mind. Let him carry on. I love a dance. What's that sort of rumbling noise? Sorry, it's always the same when I eat artichokes. <laughs> oh my god, what's that? It's the dragon of mass destruction. You see, everyone? They do exist. Is that Thomas's work, Sir John? Well, if it is, it will suddenly become extremely talented. Sir John, tis the green man Alicia. It has come home for its vengeance to drag me to the depths of the catacombs of Salador, just outside Barnlet. Hey! You, dragon, thou snot-filled windbag. That's not the kind of thing you say to a man Alicia to get quite upset. Hast thou not heard of wet wipes, thou frothy hedge pig, thou? Executioner, give me your axe. No problem, here you go. Have at thee. Ah. It's no good, Marlin. He thinks it's the thing that Thomas made. <laughs> The beast is dead. Unbelievable. And if any more of you DMDs drop by, you'll get the same medicine. So, uh, Chilcott, what do you think? Well, it looks like DeWarren did save the kingdom after all. Oh, well, got another execution in 20 minutes. Better be off. Chop, chop. <laughs> Are you all right, sir? You look a little singed. You have no eyebrows. Or hair, for that matter. Oh, I tell you what. Next time you ask Thomas to make a monster, can you tell him not to do it quite so well? Oh... <laughs> Henry over there. I haven't seen him run so fast in his life. What's that chasing him? Ah! Go away from me! Go off! Hey, Lilo, that's my friend Henry Woodstock. He's slaying a dragon of mass destruction. He looks like he's running away from a pig painted green with paper wings. It was the best I could do in the time. Ah! What an idiot. <laughs> That was The Castle by Kim Fuller and Paul Alexander. It starred James Fleet as Sir John Woodstock, Neil Dudgeon as Sir William de Warren, Martha Howe Douglas as Lady Anne, Ingrid Oliver as Charlotte, Jonathan Kidd as Duncan and Thomas, Stephen Kimman as Henry, and Lewis MacLeod as Merlin. The music was by Guy Jackson and the producer was David Tyler. The programme was a positive production for the BBC. <laughs> On the castle. You're not fat, Charlotte. The horse just had a weak heart. I'm not sure that heaven does have a VIP area. <laughs> Who dug him up in the first place? And after I'd killed him, I realized he was the postman. <laughs> We present The Castle by Kim Fuller. This week on The Castle, a dragon, a sausage, and an execution. Morning, Merlin. Good morning, Sir John. Here's the morning scroll. Oh, I see the king has banned wives and girlfriends from accompanying our knights to the Crusades. <laughs> Here you are, sire. A full English breakfast. Ah, thank you, Merlin. And to prove the ingredients are truly English, I've given them the power of speech. Beg your pardon? Ask the sausages where they're from, sire. <laughs> what? Go on, sire. Ah, uh, well, hello there, sausages. Where are you from? We're from up north, my lord. <laughs> Just outside Bolton, is that like? Happy it's good to meet, yeah? <laughs> Charmed, I'm sure. <laughs> and the egg. Ask the egg. <laughs> hello, egg. Where do you hail from? From the green verdant pastures of Wilston, sire. <laughs> oh, why? <what>? He's amazing. <laughs> How about the beans? Do they speak as well? No, sire, but they do make a noise. <laughs> Merlin, I appreciate the patriotic gesture, but I, 
I find it unnerving to have a conversation with my breakfast before sticking a fork into it. Oh, don't worry, sire. I've put them under a spell. They won't feel a thing. Oh, okay. Uh, well, here goes. Ah! Oh, sorry, my lord. Needs a bit of work. Merlin, you're an idiot. Ah. ah, morning, Anne. Charlotte. Morning, Father. Morning, Sir John. What are you girls up to today? Oh, the usual excitement. Embroidery, rejecting potential suitors, and nine hours sitting for a stained glass window. <laughs> How about you, Charlotte? Are you being immortalised in coloured glass? No, sire, but I believe I am already immortalised on the wall of the gents' water closet at the Merc Inn. <laughs> Morning, everyone. What a lovely day it is. The sun ascending in the firmament, bathing the castle walls in, like, a golden glow. Are you all right, Henry? Yes, Father. Why? Because you've somehow managed to string a series of words together into a more or less coherent sentence. That's because I've decided it's not cool anymore to be in our cuticular in our, uh, you know, can't put words together if you know what I mean. <laughs> Bizarrely, for once, I do. <laughs> Uh, perhaps there's a chance that uh, Charterhouse might be worth all the fees I've been pouring into it over the years. <laughs> cool. Morning, Sister Anne. How are you doing? How am I 